thinking about buying a house in Pennsylvania without a real estate agent sounds like a bold move. But here's the million dollar question. Do you know what it takes to pull it off? From pre-approval to closing, buying a home solo can be a wild ride. In this video, I'll break down the step-by-step -step process of buying a house without a realtor in 2025. We'll cover the good, the bad, and everything in between so you'll know exactly what you're signing up for. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Dawn D'Amico with EXP Realty, your favorite Philadelphia area realtor. And as much as I like making these videos, what I love to do is help people like you move to this amazing area, as long as you're not a jerk. So like, subscribe, and reach out to me anytime if you're even considering a move. Okay, let's get into how to buy a house, no agent needed. Step one, unless you plan to lay out cash for your home purchase, you need to get pre-approved for a mortgage. This isn't just a suggestion. It's essential. Pre-approval shows sellers you're serious and helps you figure out exactly how much home you can afford. Here's exactly what you'll need. Pay stubs, tax returns, bank statements, and a decent credit score. Without a realtor guiding you, it's up to you to compare lenders, negotiate terms, and avoid hidden fees. Quick tip, shop around and get quotes from at least three lenders to ensure you're getting the best deal. And using a local mortgage broker is highly recommended. Step two, find the right neighborhood. Pennsylvania has it all, from bustling city streets in Philadelphia to quiet suburbs and rural retreats. Research is your best friend here. Check online resources for crime rates, school ratings, commute times, and property taxes. If you're moving from out of state, I highly I highly recommend spending time in potential neighborhoods at different times of the day. The vibe can change a lot between morning coffee runs and evening strolls. Step three, start house hunting. Once you've figured out your financing and what neighborhood you wanna live in, websites like Zillow and Redfin make it easy to browse. But here's the catch, not every home is listed online and some listings may be under contract already. Stay on top of new listings by setting up alerts and be ready to act fast. Without an agent, you'll need to coordinate directly with the sellers or their agents to schedule your showings. Step four is making that offer. Here's where things get tricky. Writing an offer isn't just about naming a price. It's about crafting terms that work for you and the seller. You'll need to include contingencies for things like inspections and financing, as well as timelines for closing. It's also a good idea to hire a real estate attorney to review your offer before you submit it. Trust me, this is a small investment that can save you big headaches later. Step five, the mortgage application process. You thought you took care of this in the beginning, right? That was just the pre-approval. Pre-approval is an initial evaluation by a lender to determine how much money they're willing to lend you for a mortgage based on your financial situation. It's not a guarantee of a loan, but it shows sellers you're a serious buyer. Now that you've found your perfect home, the real work begins. The mortgage application is the formal request for a loan once you've found a home and had your offer accepted. Accepted. At this stage, the lender does a more thorough review to finalize your loan approval. Your loan officer will be asking you for more financial details as you make your way to the closing table. Step six, after your offer is accepted, it's time for inspections and appraisals. You'll need to hire a licensed home inspector to look for issues like structural problems, mold, or faulty wiring. If the inspection turns up any surprises, it's up to you to negotiate repairs or ask for a credit. No no agent means no buffer, so prepare to be comfortable with some back and forth negotiations. At the same time, your lender will schedule an appraisal to ensure the home's value matches the loan amount they plan to give to you. If the appraisal comes in low, you'll need to either renegotiate or come up with extra cash to cover the difference. Step seven is title insurance and your homeowner's policy. Title insurance protects you from legal disputes over property ownership, and you'll need to find a reputable title company to handle this. They'll also coordinate much of the closing paperwork for you. At the same time, you'll shop for a homeowner's insurance policy that meets your lender's requirements. Be sure to compare coverage options and costs. It's easy to overpay if you're not careful. Be sure to shop around for the best insurance rates and using an insurance broker is your best bet. And step eight is closing day. This is where it all comes together, but getting to the finish line
it isn't always smooth sailing. Last minute surprises like missing documents, funding delays, or repair disputes can derail this process. Without an agent, you'll need to keep track of every deadline and double check every detail to ensure a seamless closing. Buying a house in Pennsylvania without a real estate agent is totally possible, but let's be honest, it is a lot of work. From navigating paperwork to negotiating with the sellers, this process can be overwhelming. If you're moving to the greater Philadelphia area, why not let me make your life easier? I'm a licensed realtor. I'll handle all of the heavy lifting so you can focus on finding your dream home. Call, text, email me today. My information is below. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell for more tips of living your best life in the greater Philadelphia area. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.